Hi, welcome to the National Science Foundation Revolutionizing Engineering Departments Project at Bucknell University. I'd like to start off my provocation with two allusions to literature. The first is a poem by T.S. Eliot, uh, reminding us that actions have consequences, some of which are malign. The second from J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings that really focuses on environmental change. I've been asked to start with some provocations, so here they are. First, the economic benefit of engineering is becoming increasingly disconnected from its personal meaning. Because of this, students recognize that while engineering remains the path to a comfortable life, it's not necessarily the path to what they would call a good life. And this is because engineering success has led to negative systemic side effects on the environment, climate, equity, that we cannot conveniently ignore in our undergraduate degree programs. And if we are unable to reflect the diversity of our society, we will not have the moral authority that we need as engineers to address systemic challenges. I would argue that if the lack of representation is a societal injustice, broadly speaking, then by seeking to improve engineering education without first addressing equal representation, we may be perpetuating injustices. And injustice and catastrophe tend to be tightly coupled. So what really are we doing here? Now, this is not the first time people have sat down to address engineering education. From the very start of engineering education, we've had blue ribbon panels and reports at least once a decade looking at engineering education. These started off with the intent of marrying science to industry for the sake of production. And we succeeded dramatically at doing this. But as a result of that, we became increasingly a technological means to an economic end. And this has created new challenges, the challenges we face today. And the NSF Red Project at Bucknell argues that our challenge is no longer to tame science for industrial use, but rather to tame industry for humanity and the planet by shifting our undergraduate degree programs from a means-focused technical discipline to better equipping students to solve complex conversion problems in social and human contexts. And my argument is that this does not require a full teardown and reprovisioning of engineering education, but simply giving students more freedom. The basis of our project really is based on Amartya Sen development as freedom framework. And he argues that freedom is central to development, both as the primary end and as the principal means. So I wanna ask you a question. If you value your own academic freedom, can you articulate the academic freedoms that are guaranteed for students in your program? If not, maybe you have some thinking to do. Now, Sin defines freedoms as what he calls functionings and capabilities. And freedom is measured by a person's functionings and capabilities. Functionings are just what a person values doing or being, what they want to become. And capabilities are the functions or value a person is actually able to achieve within their lives. And freedom is defined by people have the capa having the capability to develop in the way they want to and the ways they value according to their functionings. Um, the argument that we are making is that we are spending far too much time providing students capabilities with not enough emphasis on them developing new functionings while they're in college. And providing capabilities that don't align with students' desired functionings ultimately are of little service to students because they don't value them. Why is ECE a perfect discipline for this approach? First, I would argue we're the most adaptable major to a wide range of human and social challenges. Uh, what we do can easily be adapted across many domains. And secondly, the educational content in our programs is becoming increasingly disconnected from the most exciting challenges, and we're struggling to keep up. So from this general idea, we've developed a manifesto. The first is that the social sciences and the humanities are as important a foundation for engineering as our mathematics and the physical sciences. Second, that technical skills have little value unless students have autonomy and agency, and these arise from giving students 
freedom to pursue the things they value. We spend too much time developing a narrow set of technical capabilities and not enough time introducing students to new functionings, new things they could value, new things they could do with their life. And finally, we need to emphasize inaction. We need to teach students to do what is right in the moment, not simply know what is right to do. Thank you.